everyone. Today we've got the Breville BEF460. This is the thermal, no, what is it? Hang on, I wrote this one down. Uh, oh yeah, the Thermal Pro Nonstick. This one I've got is actually about 10 years old now. I've had it for ages. Um, but I only use it maybe once a year, so it's still essentially in good condition. I've scuffed it a little bit, you can see there's a few marks in there. Uh, but Breville stuff's pretty durable, you know, it's got thick, sturdy handles that are bolted in. Uh, it is good quality Teflon, it seems like. So, it's lasted, and I use it for all sorts. I got it because it's got that precise temperature control. So you can see here, uh, I've got a few different settings on there. I've fixed focus, I don't know if you'll be able to read that. Uh, but essentially you go through minimum, warm, simmer, saute, pan fry, and sear. Now at sear, this thing maxes out about 340, 330 degrees. You shouldn't have that one while it's not plugged in. So it can really sear stuff and set off all your smoke alarms up there, which uh, all the neighbors know about. I actually know that because I recorded this video already before, but I've fixed the focus up here somewhere. So the whole video was blurry. It was a disaster. I was very annoyed. I know that phone is going to time out, so I'm just going to tap it every now and then. Uh, but yeah, re-recording this to show this off. I'm going to do a better job of editing it and whatnot. Now it's also got this little lever here, uh, which goes in conjunction with this pouring thing, I think. So you can clip it down as such, and then it'll help it all drain to this corner, and you just give it a little pouring out it comes. So if you're doing a gravy or something like that, can be quite good. It does actually have a rack that this comes with. I probably lost it somehow, uh, but that can be really good. So if you want to put some water in there and steam some things, or if you don't want direct contact with the heat. Now this is 179 bucks still. They still sell this same model, even though it's umpteen, 15 or so years old. One of the things they tout actually is even heat distribution. So the coil does this big loop through in there and it's quite a, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a thick base, the coil's under there, of course, and it's attached uh, in there, but it's quite a thick base. So it's got a pretty good heat retention too. It takes ages to cool down. Pros and cons to that, but when you're cooking, because it's going to be turning on and off a little bit to kind of maintain the heat, that works quite well. Comes with a one-year warranty. Uh, it's aluminium bonded to steel, and they call it premium non-stick. So we'll see how it goes with that. Uh, they also tout it as 2400 watts, so we've got the little grid connect meter there and we can actually test that out. Now, first things first, oh, also it weighs, I think, 3.1 kilos, and then with this solid glass lid, which is pretty damn durable, it's got a little vent hole there, uh, with the glass lid, it is 4.4 kilos, so still under 5 kilos, which is pretty good but the lid is uh, very solid, which I actually like um, because I bang it around a fair bit. And when I'm packing it away, it slides the lid upside down with the power cord in there and goes in the cupboard. So not all too heavy, uh, not wobbly at all. The handles have never started to bend. They're solid and it doesn't rattle. So built well. Uh, but what I want to test first then is the even heat distribution. And when I last recorded this, I tested it after maxing the temperature out. And the issue was, as soon as I put this on and wet it, it started boiling and I got bubbles and I couldn't really test it very well. So, let's do this trick. I probably need to get some um, better paper towel that's a bit flatter. This recycled stuff is good for the environment, they say, but it is a bit crinkly. Um, but you can see it's not sticking flat to the bottom. I don't really know if I've got anything that'll help too much with that, but we'll try and maybe, yeah, patting it down a bit with the old dirty cloth works. I need to top up the science. I kind of have to push these bubbles out a bit, but basically, this is going to show us very clearly where all the heat is coming from, and then how quickly it distributes to, to the uh, rest of the cooking area too. So if there was only one little spot down the middle, it can actually be quite painful to use. I've used some that are like that as well. Um, and your food just doesn't cook right. It's never quite how you want. Whereas if you have got even heat distribution, uh, or at least very close to it, or good heat distribution, so you might just have two elements, but if the material like uh, copper and something like that wicks the heat all the way across the surface quickly, then that's just as good. And sometimes even better, depending on what you're cooking with. All right, so 
So that's about close enough. I'm getting a bit OCD about it now. What we're going to do is spin it around so the plug is on this side. And crank it up the hard way. Oh, you see that? My lights flicker a little bit when this turns on. All right. We can see here straight away it's using 22. Oh, hang on. I was turning it on and off, so give it a second to catch up. It said it was using 2200 watts there, nearly 2300. Now, the way it equates that is essentially your voltage times the amps. 2400 watts, which it's rated for, is if we're getting 240 volts on the dot, which in Western Australia we just don't get. So, 2300, considering it's drawing 9.4 amps uh, out of a theoretical 10 amps, 9.5 amps even. Um, because it's cold, it's going to be less efficient. The amps are probably going to go up a little bit, I believe, if my math is right, science is right, once it's heated up. Uh, so the closer that says to 10 amps, the more efficient it is. There's always, oh, it's already going up, there's always the chance as well that it can't quite draw 10 amps at the lower voltage. This, though, so far looks like it is heating pretty uniformly. We can see it is a bit more along the... It's, the center's a bit slow, as is the edge, but in fact, it's missing just... Kind of the edges and corners, the center caught up very quickly, and the rest of it was pretty much spot on. We can see now as well it's drawing out to the center extremely fast. For the sake of this terrible camera always dropping out due to heat, uh, I've also already got the ice pack here on top of it first, and I'm streaming it to another screen that I can see out the corner of my eye. Um, so if it does stop recording, I'll know straight away and hopefully not lose too much footage. So, that's nearly dry, just like a little bit of water there, but that was fast and uniform. I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest, that's better than a lot of the other things that I've tried. The only other thing really to try that matters, besides the durability, the options, the tilt, the pour off quality of the lid, that sort of stuff, is how well the non-stick actually works. So let's get this back up to a pan fry. Non-stick's an important one to me, uh, it could be because I'm a terrible cook, might because I burn all my food, but it just makes life easier. So we'll do the same three usual tricks. First one, just gonna get some, uh, where's a good spot here? Actually, no, it didn't heat there very quickly, did it? Um, let's go for that spot. Now sugar takes the longest, so I'm putting that down first. I think an ad just popped up on my phone, but I didn't quite see it, or on the other phone, the back phone. So we'll get that sugar cooking down first. There's something I didn't consider. How flat is it? Let's just, above the boiling, not it's boiling quick. Uh, maybe as it starts to cool down, we'll test it a bit more, but it didn't look like it was actually trying to run anywhere. No, see, wherever I'm putting the water, the water's staying. That's actually pretty damn impressive. So, assuming that this bench itself that we're on is flat, this thing is flat too. It doesn't have any crazy KDSS auto leveling stuff in there, of course. Um, but it means the legs are good quality. It means the rubber hasn't worn out and sunk on one side and then not the other. And that when it was assembled, they checked it, you know, it passed on quality control and it's doing what it should. Don't stick your hands directly in steam because steam is hotter than boiling water. It's got to get to 100 degrees before it becomes steam. Next thing, going to cheese it up as normal. Cook this through till it's a biscuit, see how that goes. And then the last one is going to be the old egg test. Uh, now I'm not too hopeful about the egg test in this because it is 15 year old, 10, 15 year old Teflon technology. It is scratched up, but I mean, we can only try it and see. Whoa, look at it dance. Don't want raw egg on your hands? Or oh, oh, maybe you do. Probably don't want it in your mouth though. That's when it gets bad. So, just give these a moment. Put the lid on so that it gets cooked on top of it too. And I'm already going to turn this off because, as I said, it retains a bit of heat. Uh, so this is going to keep cooking for a while. And I actually need the molasses biscuit 
to cool down quite a bit so it's not soft anymore before I can try to scrape it up. Otherwise, it is just sugary napalm. Uh, it's sticky, it's stringy, and impossible to do anything with. The cheese is getting nice and brown. The egg's cooking up nicely. The sugar is caramelized. Sugar is actually starting to boil, which uh, mm, smells pretty damn nice. I mean, not to everyone, but I'm quite happy with it. So I'm going to cut it here. We're going to let this cool, and I'll come back to you shortly. Alrighty, that took long enough. I ended up sitting some cups in there that were full of ice and then it started pouring in with rain outside. Uh, so I had to wait for the rain to pass, but now it's touchable. This isn't napalm. Uh, so you can see how it goes. So, let me try the egg first. Oh. oh, look at that. That is actually not what I expected. There's no oil, it's completely dry under there, but that egg came right off. That's, uh, and that's going inside me. That sounds wrong. I'm gonna eat that, is what I meant to say. That's food. Uh... Yeah. Just a bit of salt, good salt, pink salt. Although I did read about a black salt of some sort. I don't know how, probably some hipster crap, but I'm curious to try it. Oh, the cheese is slightly stuck. Now, if the egg didn't stick, I don't know how the cheese can. Uh, maybe I've got it on a spot that I've scratched up. I don't know. It could also be just I let it cool for so long. Okay. There goes the ice that was bouncing on the phone, smashing to the floor. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just one corner that's actually stuck. So I'd say that's where I've scratched them. Yeah, there's two big scratches through there. Don't know if you can see. Scratch there and there. So it's stuck there. The rest of it came off pretty good. Uh, and when I did this last time, uh, before you know the previous recording, it came off with ease. So I think there's two scratches like that there you might have seen before. I think it probably held onto those. For the most part, that was all right. And mm, ASMR cheese, really delicious. Now, We've got the problem on. So, yeah, there is quite a few scratches through there. I don't know if it's really visible to you, but it wasn't the best choice of places. So this is always problematic. It will always stick to whichever surface. It's just a matter of how cleanly it comes off. Um, You can see more, it's pulled more on that side, but, oh, that's a slippery side. Oh, it's starting to separate there. You can see it. Oh, it's just such a uniform surface. It's uh, essentially airtight. It melts so much that it's spread out, and that's what makes it hard. I'm gonna come around this side. A bit of a tap. Oh, not how I intended it to come off, but it is working, I guess. Jeez, all right, this is stuck pretty good. Uh, I've got something else to do it again. Last time it didn't stick this much, all right? Not what you use on Teflon. But, as I said, I haven't been the nicest to this Teflon. You can see, as it starts to lift... Oh, Jesus. I'm going to ruin this thing, I just know it. See, air bubbles forming under it where it does start to separate. It's like it doesn't want to give. Yeah, that was a bigger scratch than I wanted to create. Um, hmm. Warning, loud noises. Jeez. 
Jesus. All right. This did not go as planned. Uh, ah, that was like shrapnel. There is sugar bits going everywhere, including my mouth and eyes. That's really stuck. So I'm gonna spray some water on it and leave that for a while and uh, take it off the old fashioned way. So I would assume, considering how easy the egg came off, the sugar would come off easily. If this was newish or if I hadn't had those scratches made from doing exactly what I just did before, that would be fine. So if you look after your Teflon, your Teflon is normally going to be fine, especially with this naturally heating and cooling. Uh, if you scratch it up, if you forcefully cool it really quickly, you're going to be having a bad time. Oh, you can see it wants to separate. Can you see that under there? You must be. Even the water's getting under there now. There's bubbles of where it's separating. It's a. Uh, it doesn't want to comply with me. Oh, maybe success. This is me just being stubborn and not giving up, but I can see it's so close to, to going. You see that little bit of travel? This isn't doing the review or my house any favors. All right, so be all indoor. I reckon it's really good. I probably stuffed up that or the, the Teflon. I'd recommend it. I'd buy it. I did buy it. I do use it. Works a treat. Um, Got to do the things the algorithm wants me to do. So if you can click the dingleberry down there and the like button, uh, leave a comment, especially if you want to see different sort of tests for this, like if there's some other way I can test it, or if you want to see some specific appliance tested. I try to read every comment. So far, uh, I only get like two of them, so I do read them all. Um, but yeah, always happy to have your feedback. Hit the subscribe button to see more, or, or just hit it twice no hit it once oh, i don't know my brain's broken um there's sugar in my wine too hit the subscribe button hit the little bell to get notifications pardon me leave a comment if you really dislike it hit the dislike button twice if you like it hit the like button just once greatly appreciated thanks for all the feedback that the 12 of you have had so far and uh catch you next time around